welcome back to Max Reaction. How are you doing today? It's beautiful outside, not a cloud in the sky. It's a wonderful day, and we're going to rea react to a new species related to us discovered in the Philippines. So I guess they said us, so I'm assuming they mean humans. So uh, in the Philippines, they discovered a new species. And I'm sure there's, you know, quite a bit of species that's not been discovered in the Philippines because the thick jungle. I remember reacting to a video where they found this flower. I think it was in somewhere in Mindanao and it, it ate like birds. Um, that's amazing. They just discovered that within the last 10 years. So let's check this out. Let's see what kind of new species this is um, in the Philippines. If you head to Luzon Island in the Philippines, you'll find Kaleo Cave hidden in the jungle. I love caves. What's so special about an old cave, you may ask? Well, this is exactly where archaeologists discovered a previously unknown ancient species related to us humans. That's interesting. No, it's not the kid down the street. This one is almost human. <laughs> Just kidding. The story Bad began joke. in 2003. It started much earlier, as in... 50 to 67,000 years ago, Whoa. but we won't go down memory lane that far. So 2003 it is. The Philippines haven't ever really been a hot spot for archaeological research for reasons I'll get into here in a bit. In recent years, it's become the third island in Southeast Asia to provide all kinds of astonishing evidence of ancient human activity. That is cool. And to tell you the truth, and of course that's what we do here, Scientists didn't see it coming at all. You see, the history of Asia, although incomplete, had always seemed clear and straightforward to experts. Paleoanthropologists, that's a $5 word, were sure that different animal species, Homo erectus for instance, arrived in modern day Indonesia over land bridges that had still been intact about a million years ago. As for the area located further to the east, Scientists have always believed that, due to powerful ocean currents, it had been completely impassable without boats, and therefore huh. uninhabitable. Luzon Island was one of those seemingly inaccessible places, because it also didn't have any land bridge connecting it to the mainland. So my, my thought is not with his thought. I, was gonna, I thought they were going to say it's fairly new. I mean, when I say new, I mean still like millions of years old, maybe. But I guess he's saying that a boat couldn't get there, which is, which is crazy to think about. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I believe that. But, and I also, I, I believe in microevolution. I don't really believe in full evolution, like human to uh, our monkey to a human. Um, I believe in creation. That's why researchers always thought that any archaeological excavations on the island would be fruitless. Even so, in 2003, Dr. Armin Mijares, a local archaeologist from the University of the Philippines, started excavations in Kaleo Cave together with his team. But at that time, researchers were still unaware of the treasures the cave kept within its limestone walls. As they were going That's about their research, the team found evidence of human activity in that region, including some tools and pottery, which were dated to be about 25,000 years old. But this discovery wasn't all that earth-shattering, so the scientists left the site. Mind you, the deepest they dug was... Well, that's, that means people were there 25,000 years ago, probably before even that, so I, I don't understand. Like, I think that's an awesome finding. ...about five feet down. But this is the norm for most archaeologists working in Southeast Asia. They rarely dig deeper than six feet. After that, they stop excavations Why? because the search becomes useless. The Kaleo cave site would have stayed forgotten and deserted for decades if it wasn't for an exciting discovery the following year in 2004. That's when another group of archaeologists discovered Homo floresiensis, a tiny human species that was later nicknamed the Hobbit. Huh. And it's no wonder. These early human-like beings bitty. were only as tall as a modern three-year-old child and lived on a remote Indonesian island along with giant lizards and pygmy elephants. Wow. They disappeared from their home island of Flores about 50,000 years ago. But scientists got enough evidence to draw a clear picture of this species. Even though it was a cool discovery on its own, it also inspired Dr. Miharis to return to Kaleo Cave. He got back on track in 2007 
with a firm decision to dig deeper. Yeah. When the team had been excavating the cave back in 2003, they went through five feet of clay and found nothing even relatively significant before they decided to give up. They came across neither fossils nor any signs of ancient human activity. Discouraging, for but sure. their efforts in 2007 paid off. First of all, the archaeologists found a layer of rock formed from a mixture of different materials. And you can imagine how thrilled the scientists were when they discovered that this layer was full of bone fragments. Apparently, these bones were washed inside the cave a long time ago. But at the moment of discovery, the archaeologists couldn't even imagine how long ago it happened. Right. When the scientists first started examining the bones, they turned out to be one big disappointment. It seemed that among the fossils, there were only bones belonging to animals like pigs and deer. But the team didn't lose hope and sent their findings to archaeologist Dr. Philip Piper, asking to look through the remains. And voila! I imagine one minute Dr. Piper was examining the fossils, and the next, he was calling Dr. Miharis with some great news. It would have been awesome to see the look on Miharis' face when his colleague informed him that he had found an almost complete foot bone oh. that resembled that of a human a bit too much to be a coincidence. Wow. But it wasn't until 2010 that no, Miharis and his team finally made their revolutionary discovery. In their search, the scientists stumbled across a 67,000-year-old human Whoa. fossil. At first, they believed the bone belonged to a miniature representative of Homo sapiens. In this case, it could have been the oldest piece of evidence showing the presence of our own species in the Philippines that long ago. That's cool. But later, it turned out that the archaeologist's initial assumption was far from the truth. Oh. It was Miharis who first suspected that their finding might belong to a structurally new species. But to prove his theory, the team needed a whole bunch of new fossils. Right. So they got keep, down to work keep and digging. did some more digging. Keep digging. It probably comes as no surprise that after going the extra mile, the researchers hit pay dirt. Can you dig it? <laughs> During the following excavations in 2011 and 2015, they wow. unveiled not only two more toe bones, but also two finger bones, seven teeth, and part of a thigh bone. The Pretty scientists amazing. concluded that these remains most likely belong to three individuals, two adults and a child. However happy they were about the discovery, it was also extremely confusing. The fossils revealed a bewildering mix of both advanced and ancient characteristics. For example, the teeth were tiny with a simple shape, making them similar to the teeth of modern humans. Right. But what makes them even more unique is that one of the upper premolars found had three roots, a feature found in less than 3% of people today. At the same time, the discovered foot bone looked like one of the ancient Australopithecines who were wandering huh. around Africa about three million years ago. I'll be dang. But let's try to draw an image of this human-like species, which was dubbed Homo luzonensis, in honor of the island it was discovered Luzon? on. Yeah. The itsy bitsy teeth meant that adults were probably quite short, about four feet tall. Besides, the toe bone discovered by the archaeologists was slightly curved. That's why the scientists assume that this species led a mixed lifestyle, right. went with their ability to both climb trees and walk on two legs. They could have walked in a peculiar way, but researchers haven't determined that yet. In any case, scientists from all over the world praise the thoroughness of the research done by Dr. Miharis and his team. Absolutely. Everybody in the archaeological community understood just how incredibly hard it is to define a new species from only 13 tiny bones and teeth. Is that all they found? There have been attempts to extract DNA from the discovered remains, but so far, they haven't gotten any results. Oh. Unfortunately, this is typical for samples stewing for tens of thousands of right. years in the humidity and heat of rainforests. But the finding seems to raise more questions than it answers. There's more. For example, did Homo luzonensis learn to both climb trees and walk when they got isolated on the island? Or was it their inherent trait? And how and when did they end up on that island anyways? Remember, it's never had any land bridge connection to the mainland. The researchers do have two theories about how the first humans got to Luzon. How? One of them claims that they set out on a voyage on purpose right. and sailed on some kind of a raft. According to the other theory, 
Homo lusinensis was brought to the island by a natural disaster, such as a tsunami. And while most scientists like the support bones? the natural disaster or theory, what? more and more evidence is coming to light, hinting that the event might not have been that accidental. There is one more thing, though, that makes scientists super excited about the discovery. It seems humans that lived on Luzon Island used tools to hunt and prepare food. Yeah. The researchers came to this conclusion after they found a deer bone in the cave that had some marks on it, as if someone had used a stone tool to cut it. Make it sharp. But that's not yeah. all. In 2018, Dr. Miharis announced that chances are Homo luzonensis lived on the island much further back in time. The archaeologists found some stone tools, as well as a rhinoceros skeleton, bearing similar markings to that deer, not so far from Calio Cave. And brace yourself, these findings are a whopping 700,000 years old. <laughs> That's a long time Unfortunately, ago. Now it's almost impossible to say for sure whether these tools were used by Homo luzonensis or some other older unrelated species. So, we just must wait for scientists to do further research and let us all in on what our ancient cousins were up to in their day. So, have you heard about any other exciting archaeological findings? It just sounds to me like they were just humans. And uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, I believe in microevolution, you, you adapt to where you're at. Kind of like, you know, when I when we move to the Philippines, I'll be darker, you know, I won't be as white. You adapt to where you're at. As far as climbing trees, um, I've been in the Philippines and I can, I've seen people that climb way up in the coconut trees fairly easy. So, I mean, humans have been climbing trees for a long time. So, I don't, you know, I don't, they, they depicted hair, like the whole, the whole body had hair which makes no sense to me, you know, because for the habitat that these uh, species lived in, uh, it's hot. So usually when it's cold, that's when animals develop their, their fur, you know. So I just, think, I just think they were humans, you know, back then, way back when. He said 700,000 years ago. Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, those are my thoughts, those are my feelings. Um, some of my thoughts may be wrong. All of my thoughts may be wrong. I don't know. You may disagree with everything I say, but it's pretty cool finding in the Philippines, I do have to say. So uh, let me know what you're thinking, let, what you've learned down below. Let me know. Um, and uh, let me know what I should be reacting to next. But for now, peace, love, happiness. Spread it!